Uh, as I was just mentioning, the way to make money in the stock market is to cut your losers short but let your winners run, and that's no big uh, revelation to anybody here. But the problem is the practical instructions of how that's accomplished, how that's accomplished. Because most folks, even knowing this, even knowing, hey, I need to cut my losers short and let my winners run, do not structure their trades or structure their accounts correctly to follow that maxim. And it's possible to be right more often than you're wrong and still lose money. You know what? I'm going to do a second poll here. I'd like to just know what your uh, what statement here best describes your performance over the last 12 months. And we're going to use that as a baseline. I'm going to be sharing you uh, with you some uh, ideas and techniques. And uh, after sharing that with you, I think you're going to be really pleased with what you see. Okay. You'll also uh, maybe have hope if you haven't done so well in the past. And even if you have done very well, you're going to have the opportunity to improve that. We're going we're gonna to check that out here in just a moment with, uh, with our before and, answer, uh, before and after answers. Okay? All right, so that poll has been up for uh, about 30 seconds. I'm not going to uh, let it go for the full minute. Okay, You guys are very responsive today. I appreciate it very much. we got uh, about half the room has already cast their vote. Probably we need to see just a few more votes, and, and, and then I'll call her quits. Okay, so three, two, one, and close. All right. <clears throat> so, again, we, we got round numbers. We got everything divisible by 10. So 30% picked winners more often than losers, okay, and won last year. And that's not a big surprise that if you picked winners more often than losers that you won. Okay, and 30% picked more losers than winners and uh, lost last year. And again, not a big surprise if you picked more losers than winners, not a big surprise that you lost money overall. But look at this, 30% picked more winners than losers, picked winners more often, but still managed to lose money overall. Now, how is that possible? Well, it's it's very simple. When you win, you don't win big enough, and when you lose, you lose too big. It's the opposite of cutting your winners short and letting your winners uh, – I'm sorry, cutting your losers short and letting your winners run. Okay, And then 10% say, I'm ready to quit just to stop the hemorrhaging. Now, uh, I think it's it's important to point out the one category that nobody filled out. Nobody said, I picked more losers than winners and still managed to win. Although that is possible, and although sometimes I have seen that in this uh, in this class, I've, I've uh, run classes twice a week uh, teaching options and, and webinars like this uh, twice a week for for over six years, and so uh, in over three hundred, oh I guess no over six hundred shows, <laughs> uh, I very often don't see more than single digit percent. Uh, last week I did see six percent. Six percent said I picked losers. More often than winners last year, but still made money, and that's possible. Okay, and we're going to show how that's possible. But uh, uh, strangely, you know, it like I said, it's possible to be wrong more often than right, but still make money. And I've proven that in real time with real dollars. The thing that makes a difference, the one tiny tweak, is to structure your trades so that you always do this, so that you always cut your losers short and let your winners run. And in my email today, I claimed that uh, you might be able to use the same process that you've been using to pick stocks. You might be using the same oh fundamental criteria, whatever it is that makes you comfortable with thinking that a stock is a good value. Okay, and you might even be uh, using the same uh, technical indicators. Okay, the same tricks to decide when to exit or or when to enter. Okay, you could use the same stuff, but make it so that you do much better over time. Okay, so I don't want to teach you a new stock pick uh, system or uh, or give you stock picks. I don't want to uh, uh, teach you a new way to read charts. Okay, I think all that stuff is played out and it's ineffective anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, you can be pretty good at picking stocks and still lose money. We found that out already. We've got 30% uh, of folks in the room picked more winners than losers. You picked winners more often than losers and you still ended up losing money. But wouldn't it be cool if you could pick losers more often than winners or pick winners more often than losers, either way, but still make money? That would be the holy grail.
Today I'm going to prove that that's possible, and I'm going to prove it easily. So let's do this. Let's take three different plays, and uh, uh, with these three different plays, we're going to examine how they play out. Okay. All right. We're going to have one somewhat modest winner, one pretty big winner, and one losing play. So that's, again, uh, winning more often than we lose. And in sequence, uh, the stocks that we pick do this, okay? XYZ goes up 2%. Remember, I told you it was going to be a modest winner. Okay, so XYZ goes up 2%. And then uh, ABC goes up 22%. 22%. Very nice, okay? Uh, but then sadly, Do Re Mi goes down by uh, 20%. By the way, I, I don't think DRM is that an actual stock symbol, but it might be. <laughs> but I was, I was going with that uh, Michael Jackson song, you know, ABC and Do Re Mi, one, two, three. Okay, so anyway, uh, DRM goes down by 20%. Okay, so, so now in this record, we won twice and we only lost once. Let's see how we do overall. Oh, yeah, we won big on one of them. We made 22% on one of them. And the losing play, we only lost 20%. Okay? So surely we're ahead after three plays, you know, even though one lost 20%. Let's look again. Uh, it goes like this. XYZ goes up by 2%. ABC goes up by 22%. Woo. And then uh, Do Re Mi goes down by 20%. So let's see how that plays out. All right? The reason I'm doing this is that a lot of times we don't actually take the time to do the math. We don't take the time to do the numbers. Let's start with a $10,000 stake, and then let's add to that. I'm going to multiply that times 0 0.102. So that's going to add 2% to our kitty. Okay, so now we made 2% on a $10,000 investment. That's $10,200. And now we're going to compound. We're going to actually uh, multiply this now times 1.22% because we're making 22% on our second play. Now that's $12,444. Okay, and now when we take a 20% hit, uh, rather than uh, multiplying times 0 0.20, okay, what I'm gonna do is multiply times point, uh, times 0 0.20 and then subtract that, okay? What I'm gonna do is just multiply the whole thing times 0 0.80. Now we know that that's gonna be the same, right, as, as losing 20%. We're multiplying times 0 0.80. Okay, so now we begin with $10,000, and we end up with $9,955.20. $9,955.20? How did that happen? Wait a minute. That's, that's crazy because we won 2%, and then we won 22%, and not only did we do that, we compounded them. You know, they were one after the other. Okay, and so that adds up to at least 24%, right? But it's actually more than 24%. But look, it seems that that should be more than the 20% loss. Well, um, the way math really works is that a 20% loss is not offset by a 20% gain. It's offset by a 25% gain. Let's check the math, okay? Say we started with $10,000 and we lose 20%. Now we're left with 8000 Okay, and we take our eight thousand and we make twenty percent on that. Well, that's sixteen hundred. Uh, making twenty percent on sixteen uh, on uh, eight thousand did not bring us back up to our ten thousand, did it? Okay. What we would have to do is we would have to take our eight thousand dollars that's remaining after our twenty percent loss and play it for a twenty five percent win of two thousand dollars to get back to where we started. And so, winning two percent once, winning twenty two percent a second time. And then losing only 20%, we end up behind the eight ball. So our stock only plays actually lost, even though we were right more often, and we made more percentage than we lost. We made 2%, then we made 22% on top of that, and then we only lost 20. But we still end up behind the eight ball. Okay, that's how math really works. Okay, so uh, what most folks like to do to look into this is uh, using a covered call. And just real quick, I'd like to poll the audience again because I know that some of you are doing covered calls. And I'd like to poll only those that have done covered calls for two years or more. Okay, <clears throat> so we have 30 people in the room right now, and I'm limiting the field. And there may not be anybody, I don't know. Okay, but I'm going to limit the field. 
uh, to only those that have traded covered calls consistently for a two-year period or more. That period may be over, or you might be in the middle of it, okay? But it's been two years, 24 months, or more since you went to the seminar, all right? I know, just like me, you probably went to one of these weekend seminars that uh, is going to teach you, you know, for three thousand dollars or thirty-five hundred, whatever they're charging now, teach you how to do cover calls in a weekend, make you an expert, right? That's uh, that's what I did in 1999. I ended up flat broke trying to follow that advice. Okay, all right. Now uh, I'm leaving that pull up for just a few more seconds, but I know that <clears throat> not everybody can participate because not everybody fits the criteria. Okay, all right. So we've got 17 percent of people in the room have voted, and out of 32, oh, now it turns into 16 percent. Some more people came in the room, so we've got over 30 people in the room. But look, uh, let me go ahead and close the poll now and share the results. Now, first of all, nobody has made the bottom uh, end of that range that we were promised. We were promised 3 to 6 percent per month, weren't we? And nobody's done it. All right, so uh, 3% per month, nobody uh, has done that. 6% <clears throat> per month, that's the upper range of what we were promised, okay, and nobody's done that either. So 40% said, well, you know, I'm ahead. All right, I'm ahead, but not like what I was promised. They told me I was going to compound my stock earnings, and I was going to do it 3 to 6% per month in any market, you know, regardless of uh, market movement. That's what they told us, right? That's what's still on the front page of uh, CompoundStockEarnings.com. The SEC should get after that guy, I think. All right, 60% say I'm about flat, honestly, which uh, over the last two years, um, being flat is actually kind of like losing, isn't it? Because uh, inflation advances and uh, your money doesn't. 20% say I don't get it. I'm losing money, and I want an explanation. Well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give you an explanation. So what if we do hedge using a covered call? By the way, i got to make sure that everybody can see what I'm showing. Okay, good. What if we hedge using a covered call? Okay. So uh, by collecting a little bit of premium, yeah, our stock goes up by 2%, but we also uh, you know, sell a covered call, and so we also collect that premium. And so now instead of winning 2% on that play where the stock went up by a little bit, we win 5%. Ooh, very cool. Okay, now uh, instead of winning 22 on the first play, we get well, uh, we only get five percent again. Why is that? Because we've ca capped our upside. By capping our upside like that, we make it so that we uh, we can't really take advantage of that gain. Now we could buy back our call and uh, or or sell one further out in time or or something like that. But uh, uh, generally speaking, when people sell a call, what they do is they lock in their upper limit. They, they really can't take advantage of the whole big move. Okay, and you know what I'm talking about. I mean, <clears throat> folks that have been doing this for 24 months or more know what I'm talking about. Okay, <laughs> I'm showing the uh, poll results again. All right, so you're not taking advantage of those big gains, are you? All right, but uh, let's talk about the loss. Okay, so uh, let's be real generous and say that we captured 5% premium. So instead of losing 20% on the last play, we only lose 15%. Okay, so what that would uh, give us after all the math is done is uh, it would take us to an even worse place. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and run the numbers. $10,000, all right, times 1.05, okay, and then times again 1.05 because we made 5% on both of the winning plays, okay, and then times 0.85. Why? Because we lose 15% on that last play. And, uh, oh, pity's sake, I, I think I've messed something up. Well, in any, in any case, we, we still lose, okay? We still lose. I should double-check my math. Let's do it again. 10,000 times 1.05 in the first win times 1.05 in the second win times 0.85. Yeah, okay. Uh, it looks like uh, this, this result is correct and the one that I got uh, before <laughs> isn't. But the point is, we still do uh, even worse, okay? We still do even worse, even though we were right most of the time, and we hedged ourselves. We uh, made more on one of those plays on the way up. We didn't make more on the other play, though, did we? And then on the way down, we lost less, but still ended up with more wins than losses, still ended up losing money. Okay, so 
What about this? What about hedging with a married put play? Now, I'm going to get into the mechanics of it in just a moment. Okay, I'll get into the mechanics of hedging with a married put play. But uh, uh, I'll, I will go ahead and say that when you buy stock and also buy a put option, you pay for the put. And you know what? Uh, the way that we do it, you'll get out early. You get out before uh, you get out before the uh, uh, ending. Hang on just a minute. Okay, folks. Sorry about that. Needed to take care of something. Okay, so <clears throat> instead of making two percent, all right. Let's say that our our uh, put option decays a little bit, and then we say, well, okay, time to get out, and we end up making nothing on the first play. Okay. In fact, we actually lose a little bit. We lose three percent, even though the stock went up by two percent. We end up losing three percent because of oh, time decay in our option. Okay. So that's that's not as sexy. Okay. And again, instead of making 22% on the second play, we only make 17% because after all, we've spent some money on that put option, right? There is a 5% uh, uh, difference, you know, instead of making two, we lose three. Uh, and then there's a 5% difference here. Instead of making 22, we, we only make 17. Okay, so so far, uh, doesn't sound so good, all right? But when it comes to the losing play, Oh, instead of losing 20% on the third play, we only lose 5%. See, that's because of structure. That's because of buying the stock and the put in a certain way. Now, these numbers that I'm taking here are not just made-up numbers. They're approximates. They're approximations of some actual trades that I've done, all right, and, uh, uh, and actually kind of where it averages out, all right? So if you, if you would normally uh, lose 20% on a play, uh, but you set it up correctly and you only lose 5%, that's, that's not just uh, uh, possible, that's commonplace, okay? All right, so now let's think about how that turned out. Well, uh, I, can, I can go ahead and run the numbers. I, I hope that's not too boring to you. You know what, I'll just go ahead and leave it up there. I'm fairly certain. You might want to run the numbers uh, on me as well, but if you lose 3% in one play, and then you uh, make 17% in the next play, and then you lose... 5% again, well, you know what? Out of all three ways of trading, out of doing stock only, covered calls, and married puts, uh, this was the only one that won long term. Okay, Out of the three ways of trading, the same stocks and the same timing. That's something I want to point out. It's the same stocks. It's the same timing. But the structure is what's different. Okay. We did better than stock only. We did better than cover calls, even though we lost twice and won once. Not shabby. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and throw up some actual numbers here. Now this is uh, a, a, a trade that I did with Altera Technologies, and it's a dated trade, but it's my favorite example. And the reason that it's my favorite example is because it shows how naked puts and covered calls underperform where using a married put performs very well. Here's the actual numbers. Uh, the stock between this date and this date, this is what my uh, technical said, this is what my uh, instinct said. I got in at this green point, got out at that red point, and uh, the stock in that time frame went up by 17.3%. Now my radioactive profit machine, which is my acronym for uh, the special type of uh, married put that I do, okay, my radioactive profit machine went up by 12%. Now you might say, well, that's only 12%, okay? But I'll tell you what, it beats the living snot out of 3 to 6% that I might have gotten from a covered call, right? Also, that 12% is not reckoned on the stock purchase only, like it would be in a covered call, okay? Or the stock purchase plus the uh, premium received. It's reckoned on the stock purchase plus what I spent on the puts. Okay, so uh, so the twelve percent is actually pretty cool, but let's take a look at the uh, the dark side here. Okay, in this particular play, I got in with five hundred shares of stock and five put options. It cost me fifteen thousand five hundred uh, four hundred twenty five dollars. Okay, fifteen thousand four hundred twenty five dollars. Up here, I spent about fifteen thousand five hundred dollars also, and I lost. And by the time I finally uh, threw in the towel, okay, called it quits. I said, okay, the stock is down by over 20%. I'm getting out. In fact, it continued, and if I had continued to hold it, 
uh, to that 30% loss zone, okay, even so, my loss would have still only been 5.6%, okay? And here's the deal. I was right once and wrong once. I used about the exact same amount of capital in both plays. Um, and uh, when I was wrong, I was even more wrong <laughs> than when I was right. Now, this is one reason why I like to point this out, okay? Because if I had done covered calls, the stock price here has not recovered since. It has not recovered to the $55 range, $50, $55 range that it was up here. It, uh, and this was in 2010. <laughs> so I did this in 2010, 2011, same 12-month uh, time frame here, and yet uh, uh, we, we haven't uh, gotten – how long has it been? Since 2011, since about May of 2011, it's been almost four years. Okay. All right, so here's the deal. I made 17.3% on the way up if I got stock and lose 31% on the way down, again, if I got stock. All right? But – Compare that with making 12% on your way up and losing 5.6% on the way down. Same amount of money, same criteria for picking the stock. Shoot, it was the same stock, all right? And yet, uh, <clears throat> uh, with this play, I make money. And with this play, I lose. And with a cover call play, I would have lost even more, okay? All right, so I'd like to invite you to learn more about Mary Puts the way that we do them around here. But just before I do, I'd like to uh, uh, ask, you know, think about what I just showed you, okay? If limiting your risk would help you, let me know, you know, and let me know where you'd end up on the scale. If every loss that you took last year was scaled down from whatever it was to 5% or less, would it have made a difference in your trading, Okay. Now, the possible answers are no. Uh, limiting my risk to 5% would not have helped my trading. And sometimes I have people that honestly uh, answer that. Most of the folks that have answered that, I pull them uh, afterwards, and they have told me, well, you know, I do day trading, so I never hold a position for, <laughs> for very long, and I never take a, a loss of more than 5%. So, you know, no, your type of trading would not help me. And so I have to be honest. Uh, my type of trading won't help everybody, but it will help a lot. Here's another possible answer. Yes, I might have lost last year, but I would not have lost as much. And here's another answer. Uh, this would have made the difference between losing last year and a win last year. You know, if you just had controlled your losses to a, a super manageable amount and left your upside open, would you have done better? Yeah, a lot of folks say yeah. And then uh, finally, the, the final answer is yes, I did well last year, but when I think about it, <laughs> I might have done even better if I had kept my losses under control this much, okay? All right, I'm going to leave that pull up for another three seconds, two seconds, one second, and close. All right, and I'm going to talk to the minority first, the 8% eight, eight that are uh, that, that say, well, limiting my, my risk to 5% wouldn't have helped. Okay, well, uh, you may be involved in very near-term, very short-term trading, and if you'd like to learn to relax a little more, be able to hold a position overnight or be able to, you know, have a, a work day or a day playing with your kids or your grandkids and not have to look at your stock several times a day, um, maybe look into radioactive trading. You, you might find that, uh, uh, that, that it's quite liberating and that, uh, number one, uh, you won't ever have to worry about those losses becoming big. And number two, you might have the pleasant surprise, like I did today. Uh, I, I, I'm in Twitter, okay, and uh, this morning Twitter had a nice four percent bump up, and so I'm I'm what they call bulletproof. I uh, I made a little adjustment, and now I can't possibly lose. <laughs> can't possibly lose in this uh, play that I've done. Okay, talk about that more uh, another day. All right, seventeen percent say yes. I may have lost last year, but I would not have lost as much. Forty-two percent. Game changer. 42% say yes, this would make the difference between losing and a win for my trading last year. And then 33% said, you know what, I did well last year, but I would have done even better if I had followed this idea. All right? Uh, I'm just going to ask, how much better off? How much better off would you be? Assuming the same win loss ratio, but no losses of more than 5%, okay? Uh, and, and for those of you that do cover calls, maybe. Um, you know, maybe you wouldn't be sorting the winners out of your accounts. Maybe you'd still have uh, some of those stocks that you said bye to that, that, that went high. But, but uh, uh, assuming the same win-loss ratio, but you had no losses of more than 5%, how much better would you do? 
Okay. And those those guys that piped in and says five percent wouldn't help me, you know, you can't vote again. I'd I'd like to see, you know, same. I don't have any losses greater than five percent. Nobody's said that so far, so uh I, I figured maybe those guys uh didn't participate. I'm gonna leave that pull up for another five seconds. And three, two, one, and close. Oh, look at that. I caught it again where I had ten percent. There we go. Okay, now, uh, this is a little puzzling. No, nobody said I didn't have any losses greater than 5%, so it would be the same. Nobody said that, uh, although in the in the previous poll, uh, some folks said, uh, hey, it wouldn't change. You know, uh, my losses were less than 5 Okay, but uh, let's let's talk about the, the, the remaining results here. 20% said, I would have saved or made enough to be ahead by $350. And you're probably thinking, and you'd be right if you're thinking this, <laughs> you're probably thinking, he chose $350 as a very specific number for a very specific reason. Yes, that's how much it costs to buy my blueprint, the blueprint book. Okay, it's $350. It's actually $339 plus shipping in the United States and Canada. That's $11. All right. Now, for those of you that answered this, the 20% that said, I would have saved or made enough to be ahead by $350, um, I've just given you the means to do that, but there is some more things in that book. There's 12 what we call income methods. And again, we don't have time to go through them today, but while you're in a married put, you can also take income out of the married put 12 different ways. And I detail them in my book and, and videos. Okay, all right. Now, twenty percent <clears throat> said I'd be ahead by a thousand dollars or more. So you can pick up the blueprint for yourself and two of your best friends, right? You know, think of this too. It's not just the thousand dollars this year. It's the thousand dollars next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. All right. And then uh, sixty percent said this would have made at least a five thousand dollar difference last year. I was giving a lecture in Colorado Springs. Um, in April, a couple of years ago, in April, and 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 uh, uh, one of the fellows in the audience was an accomplished trader. He he raised his hand. He says, "Try thirty thousand dollars." I said, "Wow, thirty thousand dollars last year. You'd be ahead by thirty thousand dollars if you had followed the strategy." And it was after a very complete explanation. So he really had some firm footing on which to base his his calculations. And uh, uh, I said, "Wow, that's something else. Thirty thousand dollars." And what it actually ended up being was, he said, no, not exactly. That's not $30,000 last year. That's $30,000 in one trade last year. Okay, so uh, kind of important there, folks. I want to invite you to learn more about married puts and the way that we do them around here. Okay, besides, uh, besides the insurance part that keeps you from losses, besides that, I know it isn't sexy to buy insurance. Okay, I know that. And it seems way more exciting to be sitting on a stock and get paid while you're doing that, like with covered calls. But see, there are more than one way, uh, more than just one way to peel an apple. There's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to get paid while you're sitting on a stock. And you've probably thought of one of them, you know, dividends. Okay, sure. So covered calls and dividends. But what about the other 10? There's 10 other ways to get paid while you're sitting on a stock. And some of them, you actually get paid while you've got this insurance policy in place and you're leaving your upside open. Now, the math doesn't lie. Okay, the math doesn't lie. Those covered call plays are not winning for you. And uh, in this poll, when I asked, uh, whoops, let me put it up there again, how are your covered calls doing? Uh, personal experience doesn't lie either. Okay, covered calls is the way to hedge your account backwards. You're uh, essentially agreeing to take less for a winning stock, aren't you? And on the other hand, you're taking on all the risk of sitting on a stock that's potentially very volatile. You know, the sexier premiums come from stocks that are volatile. And so if you're going to make any money at all selling covered calls, <laughs> you've got to trade volatile stocks. Okay, well, I've had a number of folks, a number of converts that came over after drinking the Kool-Aid. These are the folks that lost a lot in uh, cover calls trading. Now, if you're doing cover calls now, you don't have to be one of them. Okay, you don't have to get hurt uh, before you convert over to something uh, quite a bit safer and potentially quite a bit more profitable. Now, for the first time, these converts of mine are winning with options or winning more than ever before. 
And uh, what's kind of exciting is the possibility of bulletproofing. Now let's take a look at this for just a moment. When you buy stock and a put option, there there's a cost basis up here that's uh, the product of the combined, or it's the sum rather, of the combined expense. Uh, the thing is that if your stock falls down, there's a solid floor, and that's the strike price of the stock. But what if you could actually collect, using these 12 income methods, collect more premium to offset the cost of the put than the put actually costs? Now, that's not a unicorn, okay? That's not, you know, a, a fairy tale. This is something that happens, and it's actually commonplace. We do this all the time around here at Radioactive Trading. I just became bulletproof this morning with Twitter, okay? Um, to make it so that your payout of your um, your put option, your payout of your put option is higher than what you have paid for your stock and your put, the cost basis, that's what we call bulletproofing. And bulletproofing, uh, it's possible to leave your upside open, but not have any downside at all. So for those of you that answered here, you know, whoops, for those of you that answered, I would have done better, wrong one. <laughs> I put up the wrong one. I've got to put up the correct deal. For those of you that said that they would have done better, okay, 20% said uh, I would have saved or made enough uh, to, to, to pay for the blueprint, okay, or I'd be ahead by $1,000 or more, or I'd be ahead by $5,000 or more. For, for those of you that, that answered in those categories, I would like to invite you to pick up the blueprint at a very special uh, bonus, okay? Isn't it time that you join the ranks of the folks that are learning to bulletproof their stocks? And if I'm going to talk about a bulletproof stock, I'd like to also talk about a bulletproof guarantee, okay? If you were to spend a certain amount on a product, okay, and then never used it, or you found that it just wasn't going to be worthwhile, the most that you are risking is what it costs to buy the product, okay? All right. Uh, but if uh, indeed it worked out for you, there's no telling how much you can win. On the other hand, you know, what if somebody took on all that risk? Well, that would be bulletproof. You see, what we're doing here is is taking on all the risks. You, you do pick up the blueprint at, at you know, you, you need to pay for it <laughs> on the front end. If you find that, that uh, the 12 income methods, there's nothing there that's novel to you, uh, and, and you decide you want to turn it back in, uh, go ahead, send it back to us, and we'll buy it back for the full purchase price. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if you do put these things to work, and they do work out for you, well, uh, isn't that opportunity lost if you don't take advantage, okay? So with a bulletproof uh, offer about a way to uh, bulletproof your stock, um, that's uh, that's what I wanted to give you. Okay, so here's two more gifts for, for coming today. I, I did give you a strategy that can uh, take and uh, completely turn around your account. Uh, as, as, as you said, okay, you can turn around your account by keeping your losses down to 5% or less. But here are two more gifts. Number one, uh, power options. If uh, if you don't use this platform, this is my favorite platform. It's the best one out there, and it's the only one where the boys in the office know me. And uh, incidentally, everybody in the office trades radioactively. You know, they've got available to them all kinds of different uh, stock screens. If you want to look for iron butterflies or condors or double diagonals or bull put spreads, bear call spreads, all that good stuff, uh, fine. Uh, they support all that. But what the guys in the office actually trade is they trade my way, okay, because they've seen how it compares uh, against, uh, uh, you know, folks that are subscribers of mine and uh, and their own subscriber base. Okay, so anyway, if you would uh, uh, type this into your browser, powerup.com forward slash RET for radioactive trading, that will get you uh, two free weeks of the platform that I use to find these kinds of trades and to bulletproof them. And um, you can uh, check that out for free and use it with whatever options trading strategy uh, you're currently using now. Okay. Now, here's the biggie. RadioactiveTrading.com forward slash Iridium. There's five bonuses, and the bonuses themselves cost more than the blueprint. Okay, if you were to purchase these things separately, they would cost you more than the blueprint itself. And uh, uh, rather than going on about it, okay, I'm just going to send you there. Uh, you, can, you can go to uh, this link, radioactivetrading.com forward slash Iridium, and get the very best deal on the blueprint that's available. Okay?